Francesca, thank you so much for joining the podcast this morning. For having me. Absolutely. So before we jump into uh, some of the topics today, uh, can you tell us a little bit about what you do at UNICEF? Yes, I was, um, until a few weeks ago, the supporter engagement lead worldwide. So substantially coordinating the experience of our donors, volunteers, and social media followers. And in a couple of weeks ago, I've been just moved to being the director of Innovative Finance for Children. It's a new broad area that includes mainstream investments, so all the ETFs, mutual funds, bonds, but also the, all the new modalities include crypto and NFTs. Okay. So I, I do want to talk about, about that, but we will go back to your, your uh, old role first right. um, to talk about donor experience. Right. Um, how much of a priority do you think nonprofits need to be putting on experience for their donors, supporters, volunteers, you know, I mean, it was a, your job. So obviously UNICEF prioritizes it. Um, but why is this so important today? Well, it is important in general. Let's put it like that. Commercial world is obsessed about uh, improving the experience. You know? Every yep. time you buy, download, go to a concert, the first thing you got, how was the experience from one to 10? How, how often you recommend to your friends? And why do you do that? Yep. Because that's your single source of growth. You're not growing acquiring new customers or you know offering better price. You're acquiring because you get a bunch of loyal customers. It's the problem with Netflix now that they found out that actually their customers are not that loyal. <laughs> so in no profit sector, as you know, we are very good in acquiring because it's easy. It's a transactional. I can just uh, repeat this transaction, ask you to do more, and so on. Time. But as a cost, and as you can see, all that a point that our retention is terrible yeah so it costs so much more to acquire a donor than to retain it so in the previous role the idea was can we embrace this customer experience culture and it's a struggle it's a struggle because you know is difficult is a different way to measure a is a long-term investment uh, but it's definitely yield much more more money just to give you one data uh, when we start measuring uh, those donors they say they are satisfied of the experience they do and they are committed these two indicators are leading to a much better lifetime and retention of donors so it just if you start bothering asking and measuring then you're going to start see the change yeah are you is there a specific tool that you're using to actually me measure that feedback from the donors we do two surveys okay. uh and in different shape and forms uh and then uh, we plugged in into our crm okay but uh, it's not that spread we just started first, and this is across all Latin America. It is like 15 markets. It clearly just lead indicator. So it's a survey yeah. at the beginning of sign up, or two telephones, when when uh, we start to welcome donors, and then we just keep uh, measuring back after potentially after each experience. Yeah, it makes sense. In um, at fundraisers, we measure sort of customer satisfaction. Uh, yeah, it's called net promoter score, right? right? Like how likely are you to to you know, promote funders? And it's it's an indicator. It doesn't necessarily mean the customer is gonna uh, you know stay loyal or remain loyal. At the end of the day, like their needs have to be met. Right. Um, and and so I'm curious, is there like how do you aggregate? When I mean, you survey individual donors, is there some sort of like scoring mechanism that you use to kind of aggregate uh, and score your entire donor base, or is this more like an individual level that you that you look at? Well, look, first of all, this gives me an opportunity to uh, shamelessly say that in my book, that is called Octone of Feeling, <laughs> uh, I, there is a part that is devoted to how to measure and what um, makes a difference. So net promoter score is one of them. As you know, it's been heavily criticized yeah. in terms of predictivity. But my point is, if this sector will embrace some sort of measure, it's better than nothing. Yes. So our system is pretty simple because it's, it's um, one to five level of commitment, one to five level of satisfaction. And then it, it end up basically being four quadrants. People that are highly committed, high satisfied, low committed, low satisfaction. And each of them, apart from being a scorer, is automated uh, an action, which that's what is important thing. So because there are different people, people that are highly satisfied and high commitment, they deserve a t certain type of care. Yeah. People that bother to tell you that they are not satisfied, that require immediate action mm. and feedback. So it's pretty simple, but very effective in terms of predictability and, and actionability, yeah. which is for me what the system should be. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, organization, uh, your guys' size, you know, you lots of donors, lots of records. Um, and so I would imagine that there's a very strong emphasis uh, from a culture perspective of, of systematizing and operationalizing these types of things. 
Um, up to a point. Up to a point. <laughs> <laughs> but first of all, we are extremely decentralized organization. So every, we call it national committees, uh-huh. independent and 501c3. So like, uh, and then we have our country offices. They are the one based in emerging markets. So there's a very spread level of um, sophistication. And, so, and also a lot of jealousy to not share much data for privacy reasons. Yeah. So we, we definitely not there. We try to inspire and benchmark as much as we, we care, uh, we, we want. Um, again, I mean, for me, culturally, for the size of UNICEF, I would like to say that we are just there, but we know we still on a transaction base. Don't yeah. forget, yeah. like all the sector. It's easy to acquire a new donor, charging, um, asking a braid. We are still in that mentality. So that part is relatively new. Okay. Um, and so in terms of systematization, I'm, I'm glad that we now approve, like I said, 15 countries in, in Latin America, same operation that now can just say, okay, what is the score of commitment and satisfaction? How is connected to the lifetime value or the, or the value? This is already a good story. Yeah. Moving that globally, it's a different story. There's a lot of resistance. Local yeah. chapter don't like global <laughs> systematization. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Um, one more question on this topic, then we'll move on. Can you point to like a single maybe like strategy that has increased retention? Aside from just measuring sort of like the satisfaction of, of your donors. Is there something specific that UNICEF has done uh, to beat the, just the terrible retention rates that the industry uh, has become accustomed to? Well, there are many things. Again, my book has more example uh, on this, especially from UNICEF, because I was before this role, I was also the director of fundraising and marketing in UNICEF in Italy. Um, and you know, the, you'd be surprised, but one of the single uh, leading um, uh, retention indicators being uh, a birthday call. So uh, we start calling donors, scoring them, of course, based on their potential, and making a simple call to say, special day, you're important for us, happy birthday. If, if you compare two groups, same size, same story, same level of giving, this group that received the birthday call has five times lifetime value, five times uh, retention. Value. Wow. And so we, we just mainstream. Sounds simple. Yeah. But that's a, how we beat the competition, if you want, with a single birthday call. Oh, and, what's up? And do you, do you use your own team for those calls? Yeah. You, okay. Wow. That's, that's a, I mean, that's, that's amazing. Five, uh, five X uh, better retention. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. Um, okay. So you're sitting on a new team. Right. Um, talk to us a little bit about the new, what the new role looks like and what you're excited about in, uh, in this role. Well, it, it is very exciting. I mean, I've been sort of uh, doing this double role in the last few years because I've been my... my Estereo who has been like, I mean, what we do and philanthropy is great, but us is limitation, right? Um, how much um, people you're going to convince to give money? And if you look at the data, very few. Mm. <laughs> we haven't <laughs> grown the pie, you know? And yeah, yeah. You can see from every angle, but yeah, yeah. still, you know, the number of people. And out there, there is a trillion of money that goes everywhere. Spy ship, uh, spaceships, uh, uh, and and acquiring Twitter or whatever you want to call yeah. it. Uh, startups that fail miserably. That resources would be desperately needed to us, yeah. right? Because mm. unless you're gonna say that you know finding a cure for cancer or eliminated poverty is less important than acquiring Twitter or going to the to the space, right? Yeah. So how come that we are so limited? And this is Dan Palota, if you remember, oh, yeah. one of these point is. We undermine ourselves. There is a big lock on trillions dollar capital market that we cannot access because we cannot reward. So if somebody gives you money, we cannot reward it. Mm. Uh, we cannot take the, the risk in taking the money if we lose them. And so we just literally just rely on the money we raise. Right? Yeah. How much money are you going to raise to fundraise? Depends how much you raise. If you raise that much, you can get that much. It's, it's simple. We're not growing. So my new role that is called uh, Innovative Finance for Children is trying to just say, how can we get the capital markets um, and all these trillions of dollars really make a difference for children in our case? And this is not going to be writing checks or giving online. This is going to be financial products. That means somebody will going to give the money expecting some return, mm. some reward, and taking some risks. Yeah. Um, and so, so do UNICEF. So if you want to do that, you have to just give some reward <laughs> and take some risks, yeah. right? Because it's a mix. And so in this, we are, is a big area that means uh, mainstream investments that are products that today, you know, our 401k is invested in, uh, ETFs, mutual funds, bonds, uh, and 
um, all the new breed of crypto and uh, and NFTs that is completely new, separate um, world. So all these things is like, can can we just match? And you know why we do that? It's not because it's fancy, it's new, it's cool. Um, because number one, it can be, can be substantially accelerate what we do. Yeah. One thing is just say, I need $4 billion to eliminate poly from the world. It, how long is it going to take to raise $4 billion? And one thing is just say, well, the market can give me $4 billion and I'm going to pay back in 10 years. Yeah. So we can accelerate, we can grow what we do today. One thing is just say, I need this thing to enlarge my service. Uh, and third, I can really innovate and take some risk, right? Sometimes that you know things that we cannot do because God forbid fail. Yeah, I can maybe do with the market. So this is a is a new area uh, of uh, uh, of work uh, with a lot of resistance again. Yeah, as you can imagine. Yeah, but it's pretty cool. Uh, in in regards to the, like getting more access to the capital markets, um, would you would you consider also like debt in in there as as a vehicle? Hundred percent. Yeah. And in fact, I mean, I cannot reveal. I can reveal that we are now in. Um, we have to ask to the General Assembly of the United Nations because we are a UN yeah. body to change the rule to take on debt, because that's the most single. Yeah. You know, it's it, like can you imagine. You know, for me, it's it's incredible that. Um, yeah, every company grow through yeah. debt, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And we don't. Yeah. <laughs> we it's, don't. It's, you know, it, it's, it's actually, um, it, it, this is a, a super fascinating, something I'm really interested in as, as um, because, I mean, you know, my, I started Fundraise uh, and we've raised equity, we've raised debt. Um, without those, we wouldn't be where we're at today. We wouldn't have scaled and, and hit that growth. And, and so like I've gone down this line of thinking that how do we make access to these capital markets uh, easier for nonprofits, right? Because exactly. nonprofits are looked at, especially smaller ones, as like high risk. And so it's, it's, it's super interesting that you guys are kind of pioneering this pathway. Yeah. And so, so um, again, l last year, uh, one of the things I'm going to talk in my session, um, I managed to launch the first ever bond, which is the debt. Yeah. 100 million through Citibank and World Bank. Uh, and this bond, the proceeds, will, will go to fundraising in emerging markets. So Thailand, Uruguay, Brazil, South growth. So Interesting. The interesting part is, is a no recourse bond, means there's no guarantee to the investors other than the money we're going to raise ah. in five years. Yeah. Which is a risk. They yeah. take a risk. Yeah. Uh, the rewards is the impact because, of course, every dollar we're going to invest, they're going to make at least three. So it will be three times the impact. For UNICEF, is $100 million. That otherwise, we would have taken it from the budget. So, you see, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, why you want to use your grand money to grow while the market. Yeah. And the market bring you a new breed of investors that yeah. maybe can also consider to become your donor. Interesting. So in in 10 years from now, where do you see this this sort of uh, uh, concept going? Do you think that this becomes more accessible to nonprofits? Do you think it become investors start getting more interested in investing, looking at nonprofits as investment opportunities, not just philanthropic opportunities? Uh, they already do. Uh, is that there are no many opportunities? There are billions of dollars, trillions of dollars that people say, "Can I invest? I'm happy to take a risk." Tell me how many bonds you know that non-profit has in the market. Tell me how many ETFs non-profit has in the market that the investor can can do. So investors are there. We are not there. Uh. I think it's a sort of Darwinian uh, process, if I can say, because just those that dare to get there will survive if you if you want to grow yeah. if you want to grow and the same for the startups I, I really hope a new breed of startups will come with this concept yeah um, and what I see in 10 years I really see to, to really see mo more the financing of all this that needs acceleration needs growth coming from the market they also bring more discipline brings more risk but also I really my my ultimate dream is, is to have a stock market or being in a stock market, uh, because uh, in the end, our cause deserve that be you know owned and financed by the public. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. That's that's what I, I I think we should go. Yeah, one more question, and then uh, I have a few rapid fire questions mm. for you. Going back to donor experience um, and sort of the risks that you're you you know the perceived risks or not perceived the real risks that you are taking uh, on um, on the, in the capital markets. Do these things ever conflict? Do donors, when donors learn about this, 
Does it scare them away? Do they think it's it's not wise? Have you guys had to interact or a course crack there at all with, with to donors. be honest i mean um, at least my experience has been is more internal okay. internally yeah. you got every, oh my god this is not right this is not ethical <laughs> it's all internal debate yeah we haven't got any one single donor that complain okay um also because the donor support unisys so if transparently i say this will your money will be generating three times more yeah uh, basically no risk why the donor should be again i don't think there is actually a, a backlash it's very much an internal debate uh and from the investor point of view um they, they wanted to they won't invest in us uh they are just uh scared that we are so against yeah risk we are so against rewards they are we are making so much deal um so i don't i don't see a donor Backlash in that, quite the contrary. Actually, it's our donors channel. could be yeah. could also invest in our project, right? Yeah, yeah. Can donate, totally. But also can just say, why don't your ETF, your four hundred one k, is invested in our mission? Yeah, it's capital is protected, and you help us advance. Yeah. Actually, I did think of another question that is something I've thought a lot about. And at one point, you know, Charity Water did. Uh, so obviously, working the nonprofit, you know, you're typically sacrificing. Uh, compensate on the compensation side and no upside right no upside like you could you could solve poverty and not benefit at all from fr from that That's I think right. that needs to change Absolutely. because it brings the right talent to the organization when there's upside and when there's when there's better compensation um, do you think we'll ever get to a point where working in a nonprofit could be comparable to working in a for-profit uh, like a startup or a company where you can get equity in do you think that we will ever see uh, the nonprofit community uh, in in that way, so that nonprofit employees can share in the upside and share in and that potential future uh, growth? Um, uh, as the uh, the honest answer is I don't know. I see a lot again of internal resistance of a yeah. culture. It's the same. Dan Palotta say the same, right? One or the other article. We cannot attract talent because we cannot pay them. Right, well, we should pay them more because we are solving much bigger problem <laughs> yeah. than uh, we work. Just to mention, yeah. right? Uh, but totally. so, um, can we get there? I, I don't think so. I mean, I, I, as it is, the sector today is very much. I mean, look at the salary they're proposing, you know, and yeah. and is and uh, I I we have tr uh, problem in attract. You know, in my era, this highly sophisticated finance and digital, we have problems in attracting talents because obviously. Yeah. We're not competitive enough. Yeah. Um, so um, I think it's part of the same uh, mentality and culture. Um, I think it's harder to change that part comparing to the at least they they understanding engaging with the market, get some money. This is will be easier than changing this uh, reward mentality. Um, um, but um, it's part of the same. It's part of the same obstacle, yeah. exactly. So how can you engage with the with the, in a financial space, digital space, if you can attract the right talent? Yeah, yeah, it's tough. It's a, it's a tough. And I often say many times, nonprofits have to operate with two hands tied behind their back. Yeah. Uh, it's 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 hard to to scale. It's hard to grow, and and even more hard to retain great employees because of how competitive it has gotten you know, in, in the workforce. Absolutely. All right, a few more rapid fire questions. Right. There's no wrong or right answer here. Um, I'm just gonna ask some questions, and you just uh, you just respond to them. Um, movies or series? Personally, yeah. Do you like movies or uh, series better? <laughs> oh, series, series. Um, tacos or cheeseburgers? Oh, that's very American. <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> tacos, <laughs> tacos. Uh, the beach or the mountains? Beach, beach, all day, every day for me. Digital reading or an actual book? Ah, uh, digital reading. Digital reading? Okay. Uh, ice cream or Froyo? <laughs> also very American. <laughs> ice cream. <laughs> or gelato. 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 gelato okay. Uh, football or football? Football mean American football or soccer? Uh, so uh, football would be American football. Football with a U would be... Uh, soccer? Yeah. Soccer. Soccer. Uh, and then... In Actually, that's all I got. That's all okay, I got. great. Sorry, a couple of those were too American, but uh, <laughs> thank you for participating. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank <laughs> awesome. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks.